Hi, my name is Eleanor, and today I'll be talking to you about UAV and AI application for runway foreign object debris detection. Within the aviation industry, foreign object debris is any item or substance that is considered alien to an aircraft system. So these alien substances can potentially cause damage and disrupt operations of aircraft. There are two types of FOD, external and internal. This paper looks at the external FODs, which include objects in the runway, nuts, bolts, rubber, stone, and plastic. FOD can cause damage that costs airports and airlines millions of dollars every year, with the estimated cost of, to the aerospace industry being upwards of $4 billion. This responsibility of cleaning these runways falls to both the airports and the airlines. Maintenance for FOD is carried out using several methods. Magnetic bars, which is suspended under trucks or cars, which inspect the runway. Sweeping, which is carried out manually with an airfield sweeper. Rumble strips used to dislodge FOD from vehicles under carriages. And cameras used to view runways from maintenance locations or the tower. Running these methods are costly as the prices for equipment, staff and training of staff are significantly high. The cost of closure of a runway also needs to be taken into consideration with some airports in Europe stating that 1% of the delays are being due to FOD. Several FOD detection techniques in the past have been proposed. These include the use of video-based detection cameras mounted on the side of the runway, wavelet analysis of images, convolutional neural networks, wireless sensor networks, and multimeter wave radars. This paper presents a new method of detection using a UAV and AI to detect FOD at low altitudes. The concept is that a UAV will be able to fly from a base on one end of the runway to a second base on the opposite end. During the flight, the UAV will take video footage of the runway and process the data, searching for FODs that may be on the runway. During this process, the UAV will identify all possible FOD and relay the size of the object back to the control tower or once returning to the docking station on the opposite end of the runway. A DJI Spark was used for data collection and testing, however, similar UAVs can be used. Two methods were explored for FOD detection, YOLO V3 and Microsoft Azure Custom Vision. YOLO V3 uses a single neural network applied to an entire image. The neural network divides the images up into regions and then predicts the bounding boxes and probabilities. These probabilities are predicted by predetermined weight, which is one of the many features to YOLO V3. Due to its ability to look at the image as a whole, the predictions are created from a global context. YOLO V3 currently boasts increased speeds over classic models such as RCNN up to 1,000 times faster and fast RCNN up to 100 times faster. The model also gives the ability to train personal data sets by retraining the top three layers of the classifier and detector. YOLO V3 has pre-trained models for certain subjects, subject material to allow the user to build an optimized model. On the opposite end, the Microsoft Azure Custom Vision Toolbox allows building, deploying, and improving image classifiers. The custom vision functionality can be used in two different ways. Image classification, so applying one or more labels to an image, and object detection, which returns the coordinates in the image of classes. The training and validation data sets were created from four different locations. The four locations consisted of two car parks, which were cemented with dark gray and another two car parks cemented with light gray concrete. These two contrasting colors aim to replicate the color of the runways and taxiways found at most airports. The type of weather was also taken into consideration with most images taken on both a sunny and partially cloudy days. Five classes, paper, plastic, bottle, metal, and metal bolts were considered to demonstrate the types of FOD. Each of these classes in the data set had images taken at various heights. These heights range between three and 25 meters to ensure a large data set which had a large variation was created. The labeling technique is different for the two models. Label IMG is used to label the images for YOLO V3 training. Label IMG is a graphical image annotation tool in Python, which allows labeling objects using bounding boxes in images. Label IMG is a simple process in which each image that has been captured can be opened and labeled with a specific class. Bounding boxes can then be placed over each of the specific classes in an image, even where there may be multiple classes found. These locations on the image can be saved in the appropriate format to be used to train the classifier. 
The Microsoft Custom Vision labeling system has a simple user interface. Once these images are uploaded, there is a tagged and untagged option, which allows the user to know which images have been labeled and which have not. The re process requires the user to click on the image that needs to be labeled, draw a bounded box over the top, and that is it. So the first detection model, Yellow V3, was used by incorporating Google Collaborate. So this enables the use of a high powered GPU on a virtual machine, which helps decrease the training time while being able to run constantly without the main computer's CPU or GPU running at 100%. Google Collaborate offers the ability to use Google Drive in sync with any code used in the Collaborate notebook. So this enables the ability to place all images and the labeled files into a folder on Google Drive and link it to that Collaborate notebook. So this was done by mounting the associated Google Drive into the cloud VM. Alexi's AB repository was cloned to build a darknet repository. This repository is specifically used with YOLO v3 and was required to complete the training process of the model. Custom configuration files were then created from this repository to fit the number of images being used and the number of classes. So once this setup was complete, the training takes one line of code. And the process takes up to 28 hours due to the large number of images in the actual data set. Using Yellow V3 eliminated the need to cre manually create images that had been augmented as within the Yellow V3 programming, your options to change the augmentation is available to you. However, one of the main limitations to the use of Google Collaborate is the runtime that is allowed by each user. So due to the GPU being shared amongst other users, Google Collaborate only allows a runtime of up to 12 hours at a time. So this therefore means that in each instance, the training model would be interrupted at least once. Therefore, a failsafe was written into the code to allow for this limitation. So which the training, therefore there is a failsafe written into the code to allow for this limitation in which the training can be started from the last weights that were recorded. In the Microsoft detection model, a button called train is available 24 seven during the labeling process, which offers both quick training and advanced training. So quick training gives a suggested objects variable, which passes through each of the untagged images, finds the object in the images and places one of the classes over it. Using these suggestions, the user has the option to accept the bounding box location and the associated class or readjust the class and readjust the bounding box to fit the object correctly. Advanced training is the second option under the train button, which is a complete training process of the model. This uses Microsoft's AI to find the appropriate training for this specific set of data while also providing the most appropriate data augmentation within the model training itself. The advanced training allows users to determine how long to train their model from one to 24 hours. So this model was given a training budget of 24 hours to allow the longest possible training time. The training was given priority processing through Microsoft's cloud services, which meant that the model had completed its training within three hours. The map, recall, and precision values are automatically displayed within custom vision. This allows the ability to not only see the entire model's performance, but the performance of each tag to, and how each tag affected the model as a whole. So this was used to alter the data sets to create a more accurate model. The two models, YOLO v3 and Microsoft Azure Custom Vision, were used to evaluate in an experimental capacity to find the appropriate height at which each of the models are best suited for FOD detection. As each model was trained by two different methods, the height at which is optimal for each observation changes. Once this value height was chosen, the model with the highest accuracy was then used to find FOD in full-scale test. Two sites were considered. The first site, which was used to test the height accuracy of the model, had no links to the locations where the training data sets were created. This allowed no influence in the results of the model. The second site used for the full scale testing was an inactive paved glider runway located in Southeast Queensland, Australia. This simulated the general types of runways that one may find. It also provided neutral ground to test the model without any bias towards a specific area or class. Multiple objects from each of the classes were laid out in a small area. At each of these locations, leaves, rocks, and other small debris were left within the field of view to clutter the area, testing the model's accuracy. The UAV was flown over the clutter area at specific heights while recording a video. The heights at which the UAV was flown were 3, 6, 12, 20, and 25 meters. 
These video recordings were then processed through both the YOLO V3 model and the Microsoft Custom Vision model, and the results were recorded. These models were then compared to find which had a higher accuracy within all classes. The higher accuracy model was then used for full-scale testing at the second location. In the full-scale testing, multiple objects from each class were placed in the area within close proximity of each other to test the model's ability to distinguish items that have similar features, such as metal and bolts. A video was taken on the UAV at the specific height required for the final model. This was then processed by the model and results are scored to determine if OVD detection is possible. Items were then separated into large distances and the video was processed with the items apart. So the base experimental results evaluate the model using a large array of heights. The performance of the object identification was higher, even misidentified, in the custom vision model when compared to the YOLO v3 model. So using this data for either the models to obtain enough detail from each of the classes to identify them, the UAV with the current camera would have to fly below 12 meters. This would require the UAV to do four flights across the runway due to the camera limitations of the DJI Spark. The accuracy of the YOLO v3 model over each of the heights varies largely, where most of the true positives are found when the UAV was flown at less than three meters. When the UAV was flown higher at higher altitudes, there were more false positives and even no indication of any objects in the field of view. For the Microsoft Azure Custom Vision model, there was a higher accuracy amongst all of the heights. The highest accuracy was at 12 meters, where out of the 13 objects that were placed in the area, 12 objects were correctly identified and one object was misidentified. The mean average precision of the Microsoft model was significantly higher than those models created using YOLO V3 with a map of 82.9%, whereas the map from the YOLO B3 models ranged from 23.2% to 33%. So due to this, to, due to the YOLO B3 model having such a low map and low accuracy, the Microsoft model was used for the full-scale testing. In the full-scale testing, the model was able to detect not only all of the objects within the image, but also able to correctly identify each of the classes. So even with this limitation of the camera specifications on the DJI Spark, each of the detections had an accuracy above 70%, which is significantly higher than expected. The ROC curve of the model was significantly high with an area of 0.89, and the model was able to decipher both paper and the metal class quite easily. The class the model had the most difficulties was the bolts class, with its AUC being 0.72. This is due to the detailed elements of the bolts not being recognized as correctly as other classes. This is a known limitation as bolts are small objects which can very easily be missed depending on the height of the UAV being flown and the camera being used. Also due to the small in nature size of the bolts, there's also a higher percentage that the model will labor other objects as bolts, giving them a high percentage of accuracy for that class. At a height of 12 meters, the model was able to excel with no false positives arising. In future testing and implementation, the live stream video footage from the UAV would be sent to the cloud for processing rather than on the UAV itself. Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services allows custom vision models to be uploaded to the cloud and used in real time object for real time object detection. When the video feed from the UAV is unplicked to the synchronize in the Azure Blob Storage, it is immediately processed by Azure Blob Storage, which has triggered to which is has a trigger to execute a simple Azure function. So this function sends a message to the Azure Cure, which executes an advanced Azure function, which retrieves the video from the Azure Blob Storage, takes every second frame of the video using OpenCV, and then detects specific cases of FOD and writes the results to a CSV file, which can then send a result to the tower. The ability to have parallel video processing is one of the many features which can be utilized to increase the speed of detections being conducted in the, on the cloud. So in conclusion, this paper proposed a method which combines using a UAV and AI for FOD detection from runways. The data sets are 1500 image, images for five different classes, paper, plastic, bottle, metal, and bolts were acquired from four separate sites. Two data models were explored, YOLO V3 and Microsoft Custom Vision. Each data set was labeled in the specification of the two models to enable training for each model. The training of each model included data augmentation on each of the data sets, which were automatically created by the training program. 
Full scale testing showed that Microsoft Azure Custom Vision Model was able to detect each of the FOD classes laid out in its field of view and correctly class each of the objects. The ability to retrain the model to improve the map with the more data gives greater model adaptability for multiple situational types, which includes the addition of further FOD classes if required. The final test shows promise into the probability of future use on runways. Testing of not only the model, but particular UAV that was used gives a greater understanding as to how the UAV will be needed to be set up and configured for the best possible practice of FOD detection in future. The future work can focus on a UAV which has a better camera resolution and is more tolerable to wind disturbances. So once this is completed, a model would need to be trained based on the recommended, recommended height of this specific UAV. And once this has been achieved, a model can be created via the cloud to allow real time, real time object detection without the need of an onboard computer. So this would not only allow the model to find FOD on runways, but also allow for a uniform product that could be implemented anywhere around the world. I'd like to acknowledge Peter Trotter and Aspect UAV Imaging for the use of a DJI Mavic Pro and finding a suitable runway for full scale testing and George Marin for the use of an inactive glider runway. So thank you everyone for listening to this paper. Uh, if you'd like to contact me or Felipe, our contact details, details are here for you.